everyone, and welcome to Dallas Hoops FanCast, a podcast for Mavs fans. I'm your host, Sydney, and I'm here with my co-host, Martin. Hey, guys. You can follow me on Twitter at underscore Sydney Myers. You can follow the show on Twitter at Dallas HoopsCast, and you can listen to new episodes and read exclusive articles at DallasHoopsCast.com, where you can also read the latest breaking news and shop for Mavs gear and tickets. It's awesome. DallasHoopsCast.com. Um, and you want to hear something exciting? No. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you anyway. Oh, okay. We got a review. Oh, we did. Cool. This is exciting. Yeah. Okay. All right. We, we actually, just one? well, we actually have another review from A. Levy or Levy. Lev- I think he actually follows us on Twitter. Um, but he left a review back in August and it was very nice. He said it was his favorite Mavs podcast. Thank you. He said, as a big time MFFL living in Central Texas, the Dallas Hoops fan cast is my top choice for Mavs talk. The hosts are a joy to listen to. Wow. Huh. Yeah. And discuss the Mavs from a fan's perspective. that makes perspective. one person that actually likes us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but then we got another review from I am life over, no wait, I am life lover of liberty. And uh, this person said, pleasantly surprised. I was looking around for a Mavs podcast and stumbled on yours. So excited for this season. So thank you. I don't know what to say. I, I I'm know. actually surprised. I'm, I'm flattered. <laughs> Every time you uh, mention the fact that they can leave a review, I'm always like, oh, God. People they do were going to get some terrible <laughs> ones. No, yeah. people do it. So Who's that stupid guy on there? <laughs> Um, yeah, leave a review on Apple Podcasts and we'll give you a shout out in our next episode or in a future episode. But okay, that's uh, that's the intro. Let's get on to the episode. The math season starts tomorrow or possibly today, when it, depending on when you're listening to this. And there's a lot of excitement, but I wanted to cover three um, pretty important topics that I think will tell us a lot about. You know what? Let's just get into it. Okay, the first thing I wanted to talk about is really a question that I want to pose. Okay, do it. What are five things that you think must happen in order for the Mavs to make the playoffs? Now, it doesn't have to be like all five of these things have to happen. It could be one or two or three of them or maybe, you know, these two two or so then these three. Would we just title it things that should happen? If the math's going to make the playoffs, yes. like I feel like you're adding that is five also means good. that we need five. That is also good. So you don't need five. It's just things that must happen yeah. in order for the Mavericks to make the playoffs this year. Yes. So I have my list. Okay. I'll share my, we'll go through them and discuss. These are the things that I think will have to happen for the Mavs to make the playoffs. First, number one, I have Porzingis needs to average 20 points per game and shoot about 44%. And I said this because I don't think the Mavericks have solid depth, which I feel is kind of going counter to what I've heard a lot. Because when people talk about who's the fifth starter, they have so many options. It's like, Uh, no, they have no options. That's That's why they have so many options. That's the problem, (laughs) yeah. So I don't think they have solid depth. And so I think Porzingis will need to be like at 20 points per game or more. If you look back at... Um, the the last two years that the Mavericks made the playoffs, that was in the 2016 season and the 2015 season. In 2016, they had Dirk, Darren Williams, and Chandler Parsons. In the 2015 season, they had Dirk, Monte Ellis, and Chandler Parsons. Like all three of those guys averaged anywhere from 15 to 18, almost game, 20 yeah. points a game. Yeah. And on this team, I don't think they have that third guy this year. Well, <clears throat> they don't have the third guy, but they don't have the third quote unquote star. Yeah. What I really think the Mavericks um, depth that they do have is with their guard position. Yeah. I think definitely. JJ, Seth, and Tim Hardaway, and I really and do Brunson. think, and Brunson, yeah. and uh, I think that uh, the Mavs found something with the lineup of Curry, JJ, and and uh, Tim Hardaway. Mm-hmm. We didn't see it that much, but we, when we did see it, it was unstoppable offensively because all three of them kind of just play free and go. Yeah. So I'll counter that one. Okay. I, I want to add to it, actually. So okay. I do believe that Porzingis needs to average at least 20 but I want to add that if the Mavericks are going to make the playoffs, Luca and Porzingis must combine for at least 50 points a game. Oh, so okay. whether that's Luca 28 and Porzingis oh, okay. 22 or yeah. both of them at 25, mm-hmm. I think you have to get 50 points at least 
from yeah. those two guys. If you do that, I think you have a real shot at making the playoffs. Yeah, and I think, you know, again, like if you just look back at when they did make the playoffs, you know, those teams weren't great. I think they were very well coached. But when you look at the roster, they actually did have a solid three. Now, it wasn't the big three like Miami or whatever, but they had a solid well, three Well, they players. made the playoffs with the Monte year. They didn't make it the year after that. Yeah. So the year they had Monte, which was a leading scorer of the team, he averaged, I think, 18, 19 a game. Yeah, but even the year before, uh, after that, when they didn't have Ellis, mm-hmm. they still made it with Dirk, Darren Williams, and Parsons. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, even though those guys aren't superstars, they were still legitimate players. Whereas this year, I think anybody could make the case for any player. But to mm-hmm. me, when I look at it, I don't see that solid third guy. And and that kind of goes to my second point, but we can finish this up. Without that solid third guy, I think that, like you said, Luca and Porzingis are going to have to re- carry the load. Yeah, and I, I think that their third guy is going to be J.J., um, Seth and Tim Hardaway, kind of a combined effort. Because really, on any given night, any one of those guys can be the third guy. Even Jalen. So they have a they may not have a guy that every night is going to bring it, but Carlisle has a way of having one guy impact that game because of matchups. And so at any given night, a third guy can have a, a big night. Sometimes it's Dwight. Sometimes it's Maxi. Sometimes it's Tim Hardaway. So I, I think that's how they'll probably end up doing it. But I, I do think they'll have to average that that many points. Yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying, how um, Carlisle is really good at, you know, finding the hot hand and yeah, finding the hot the hand. matchups, yeah. But I think it's telling that you don't know who that guy is going to be on any given night. It's nice when you have, you know, a solid three or four guys and then you have any player can get hot. Yeah. But I think whenever... Your third best player is actually a conglomerate of like four other players. That's why I think they kind of lack depth. Yeah, I mean, are you expecting the third guy to be a third All Star? No, I mean, none of none of those I mean, guys are All Stars when really, they made the playoffs. Any of these teams that have these dynamic duos, you have a question mark as their third best player. I mean, the Rockets. Who's their mm, third best player? Eric Gordon. I mean, or Clint Capella. Or Clint Capella. Yeah, I thought yeah. of him too. Well. You know, so and, it's not really, there's no guarantee that, yeah, both, you know. But I think that's more about that those guys are so good that yeah, you're not well, sure which one is the third. I'd probably put my foot in my mouth on that one. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, that's true. Yeah. They don't have that solid third guy. And let's hope as the season goes on that uh, that guy will develop. Yeah. Well, and that's, so my second thing that would have to happen for the Mavs to make the playoffs, this is actually kind of an either or. So either Porzingis needs to average 20 or more points, and like you said, Luca and Porzingis need to get 50, uh, you know, in any, game, even, any given game. Counter that, or either between Jalen, Curry, and Hardaway, one of them will need to average 15 or more points on 46 to 47% shooting preferably 40% from the three and and that person will become the third guy not not like not a conglomerate like mm-hmm. you said but just one of them has to stand yeah, out yeah yeah my only thing with brunson is is he going to be given the opportunity to do that because i believe that person is brunson in fact last year he averaged 14 a game on 40% yeah. from three and like 46 or something from the field so he was almost that last year i think he can be that this year i just don't know like if you look at the projected starting lineup tomorrow, mm-hmm. it's Dorian, yeah. Maxi, Porzingis, Luca. Luca, and Delon. Yeah, and you know, so when when is Jalen gonna play? Yeah, because yeah. you can't take minutes away from from JJ. Well, you know, and Seth and Tim. Yeah, it depends on how Berea plays. I mean, he's older and he's coming off the Achilles injury, so it's possible that just naturally minutes will open up for Jalen. Yeah, but what if JJ comes back and he's good? Yeah. Like he always is. Yeah. I mean, then it would be difficult. And yeah. I also would say Carlisle loves to run, you know, three guard or the, you know, the weird lineups. Yeah, well, that three guard is JJ, <laughs> Seth, and Tim. I mean, you can't go out there with four. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it could, yeah. <laughs> so uh, the only thing is like, uh, and, and I know it's kind of off topic, but I understand why they're potentially going to start Dorian. We don't know for 100% certain, yeah. but that's what was As released of right now, yeah. yeah. 
And it's because of the length and the size, and they like that for defensive purposes. But I just think J.J. is so much better player than Dorian. If he's given that opportunity, I believe that person is J.J. I mean, uh, Jalen. Okay, you think Jalen is so much better than... I think Jalen is way better than Dorian as far as a starting option. Yeah, I mean, I think it's no secret we're not high on Dorian at all. So, yeah, I mean, and there's there's a lot of fans that have talked about starting Brunson or starting Curry or Tim. Yeah. Well, not so, not so much yeah, high on you know, Tim. Which, so, it's, sorry, go ahead. Well, to me, honestly, with Tim Hardaway Jr. is kind of like my point about how one of these guys is going to have to average 15 plus and shoot 40% from the three point line. Like, I don't know if Hardaway is going to do that or not, but one of them is going to have to. And I mm-hmm. think he could, but I don't know if he's going to. Yeah. What's funny about Tim Hardaway is he played so well in the preseason coming off the bench and it almost hurt him yeah (laughs) because he played so well oh we'll just make him our sixth man it's like well i mean he was actually fighting for a starting role and i feel like if he struggled coming off the bench that they would try him at the starting starting minutes and then he would have done well at the same time it's like i'd rather come off the bench than not play at all (laughs) so yeah i mean i'd rather him start over dorian yeah yeah i that's that's a tougher one because I expect his him to be more a more efficient shooter, but I don't know that that's going to happen. I mean, going then, by his past history, why should I believe that? Well, he's so. more efficient than Dorian from three. I mean, uh-huh. even Dorian's last year was his best three point percentage year. It yeah, was that 30%. is true. Yeah, that is true. And so, even if he's thirty four, Tim Hardaway thirty four percent from three. It's still better than Dorian. Yeah. And I think you still got the length and size. It depends on what Carlisle wants, though, because Dorian is definitely less aggressive offensively. Yeah. And so if he wants that, just a guy that's going to move the ball and maybe shoot wide open shots, then he, Hardaway is not that kind no. of player. And he just likes Dorian. He just likes he Dorian. He just likes yeah, Dorian. Pretty and much. Dorian is getting favoritism and that's what, right like, now. I think we could make a case for Dorian getting minutes, but in the end, it's Carlisle likes Carlisle likes him, likes him and he's going to start. Yeah. So anyway, that was one of those two things has to happen. Either Porzingis and Luca need to ball out or the third guy needs to become a parent. Yeah. I, I mean, the, the argument could be made that all three of those have to happen. That's two. All, both of those have to happen <laughs> in order for them, the Mavericks, to make the yeah. playoffs. Well, yeah, true. Um, okay, my third thing that needs to happen is DeLon Wright needs to be the defender that everyone says he is. Yeah. And I'm not doubting that he is. I'm just saying he needs to be that. Because if you think about in the West, everyone knows you got these guards. But when you think about it, it's not just – a guard on each team a lot of these most of these teams in the west have two mm-hmm. superstar guards so you have harden and westbrook westbrook mccollum and lillard you know Kawhi and paul george paul george apparently a yeah. shooting guard now <laughs> um you have uh Demo- or no steph and d'angelo russell you have demar Derozan, chris paul Jaron fox Murray. donovan mitchell yeah a lot of these teams have two stud guards and so they won't be able to get away with subpar perimeter defense. I think that they're going to have to be able to stop these guards from just, mm-hmm. you know, throwing down the haymaker every night if they want to win those games. And I think that is why Dorian, yeah. you know, because he's this great defender. Well, um, and DeLon, right. If he's, well, DeLon, so I think DeLon is going to get the top matchup every night yeah. he's gonna be on harden yeah he's gonna be on steph on a willard he's gonna be on the top guy and we haven't get, got to see much of what his you know s- potential defensive yeah, stopping because preseason is just not yeah, like that we didn't have any clutch moments where it was just him guarding the top guy yeah we never saw that and uh He's going to have to do a better job than Wes Matthews. Wes Matthews was yeah. that guy last year. And I'm yeah. going to be honest with you, that's not really a high bar. <laughs> yeah. Because last year's Wes Matthews couldn't stop a, anything. I don't know a, an analogy for it. But. Yeah, Wesley Matthews, he just didn't have the foot speed for no, it. No, no. Um, the only guy he really guarded well was James Harden. And that's because he didn't not, move. Yeah, he's yeah. not very fast. Just yeah. stepped backwards. Um, And so, yeah, honestly, just having the foot speed, I think, yeah. in itself will help. But also, he has other... Um, intangibles and the length and all that to be a good defender. I know that's what he's known for. So, but he's going to have to do that. Well, and see, every to, night take on one of these guards. Tomorrow will be Bradley Beal. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, Friday, I guess it'll be Drew Holiday is who he's going to be picking up. Yeah, so probably. You know, we'll see how that goes. I, I don't want to 
gauge it based on tomorrow's game against the, the Wizards yeah. because the Wizards just straight up suck. If you saw their starting lineup, <laughs> know. it's like who, 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 Beal, who? You know, it's like who's yeah. out there? Yeah. But um, regardless, I think if they really want to make a playoff push, they, they're they not going to be able to get away with like, oh, well, you know, we just don't have the defenders. Maybe yeah. we can outscore them. Like, yeah. I think I think they will be amazing offensively and maybe outscore some teams, but they're going to have to stop. Because especially when you face a lot of the teams, like I said, that have two dynamic guards, you can't have both of them going off. So he's going to be able, he's going to have to slow down. One I mean, of them. a lot of defense, though, is team defense. True. Yeah. So it's a and lot of proper help. And I'm sure they'll be well help. coached. Yeah. yeah. And they'll have Porzingis mm-hmm. back there to it's help out. Really, where he comes in is when it's, it's crunch time, yeah. where it's you against him. And uh, we need him to, to be that guy. Yeah. Okay. Fourth thing that I think needs to happen for the Mavs to make the playoffs there's, Five teams that I, that they may be battling with for a playoff spot. The Kings, Thunder, Spurs, Timberwolves, and Warriors, depending on who you ask. Yeah. So I think they need to win those games. One, because they'll be competing with them for a spot. So obviously in rankings, you got to mm-hmm. beat those guys. But also, since you are competing with them, if you don't beat them, then you're probably not better than them, which means you're probably not going to get that spot. You know, that's, yeah. that's more of like a long-term outlook, but it's just a logical... They're going to have to beat those teams if they want to well, get in, in over them. Particularly, I think they got to win those games on the road. They have to have a good they gotta road win, because yeah, they gotta at win home, road games. they can beat anybody yeah. at home. But on the road, they get destroyed. And so on the road against the Kings, which is a hard place to play, yeah. even well, when and, they're the worst team in the league... Yeah. It's hard to play there. And Golden State and, and San Antonio. OKC, OKC and San Antonio. Yeah. Minnesota. I mean, those are going to be tough games. But mm-hmm. And I'm not saying they got to beat them every time. No, but they have, but to, have, they a, have, a, have to win those matches. a nice winning record against them. And they yeah. got to gotta get some wins on the road. You can't split yeah. with all those teams, win all your home games. A couple of teams, I, I'm not really like, the Thunder, I think, have a great three guys, which is Chris Paul, Gallinari, Gallinari and Stephen Adams. Stephen Adams, yeah. But outside of those three, I mean, okay, Shea Gilders Alexander. <laughs> hey, I like Shea Gilders Alexander. <laughs> yes. Okay, so he would have to, in order for them to make the playoffs, he would have to make stardom jump. Like, he'd have to turn into yeah. a star this year. And I just don't see that happening because I still see Chris Paul being the yeah. primary ball handler. Yeah. And I don't think outside of that, they don't have anybody. So when Chris Paul goes to the bench or Stephen Adams goes to the bench, you're going to count on Nerwin's Noel and, and who else is on that team? Raymond Felton's still there? I don't think so. You know, so I don't think the hey, Thunder... don't take Raymond Fellon's <laughs> name in vain. Okay. He was good for the Mavs. He was good for that one year. That's true. <laughs> um, so I don't think the Thunder are going to be there, but I do think the Spurs, you're going to have to beat the Spurs this yeah. year. Yeah. And the the Kings, the like you said, the Warriors, mm-hmm. the Timberwolves. Yeah. So um, last thing that I think needs to happen for the Mavs to make the playoffs this is sort of, you know, abstract, but Luka Magic. Like, I think he's going to have to win some of those games that they should not win. Like, you know, you have those games where you didn't play good defense or, you know, you got nobody could get out a shot rebound. Yeah, down, nobody yeah. could make a shot. You had a bunch of turnovers. Somehow you kept it close. Normally you would lose, but because you have that one guy you're mm-hmm. able to win it, but Luca has to has to do that. And I have no doubt he will. I mean, he did it last year. So I think this is one that we can pretty much pencil in, but he's going to have to win some of those games for them because since they're not very good, they're going to have a lot of those kinds of games that they, you know, if they didn't have a star player, they'd probably lose well, it. Well, that's why I go back to the him and Porzingis have to just straight up yeah. dominate because there are going to be games where Dorian – is over 22 because he'll go through a stretch of a whole month. He can't get a three to yeah. drop. Um, there's going to be games where Dwight Powell can't get a, a roll, you know, and an alley oop. So for those games, that's why I think, to your point, Luca is yeah. going to have to look Luca Mania, Luca Magic, Luka but Magic. so is Porzingis. True. Like Porzingis has got to have to help Luca out. Luca can't do that every night by himself or he's just going to get gassed like he did yeah. last year. So having Porzingis, I think, help as well. I don't want to put it all on Luca. Yeah, true. Um, but yeah, I'm not really worried about this. Like, 
you know, if you think back last year, the game against the Rockets, the Blazers, the Timberwolves, the Bulls, the Nuggets. Yeah, there even was, though they lost that game. Yeah, but know. there were several games where you know it was tied or they were down, and you know, as a sucky team, they would have lost it. That's mm-hmm. why you suck. But because they had Luca, he could hit that crazy shot or go for eleven in a row, things like that. That they kind of put you over the edge a little bit, and I think that's a lot of what determines whether you're a playoff team or not, is you got to be able to win those kinds of games. And I think Luca or Porzingis will yeah. have to do that. Well, and that's teams that win those kind of games. They have the star power to do it. Yeah. And yeah. so that's, and you know, Luca and Porzingis are going to have to be superstars. Yeah. I remember um, one time I was talking to, we talked about this the other day. I was talking to a Pelicans fan and he was like so frustrated about why aren't they better? This was a few years ago. They like weren't making the playoffs and he's like, I just don't understand why they're not winning more games. And I was like, it's just talent. You know, you don't you don't have anybody. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just it. And so it's like you think, you know, oh, we're good enough to good enough to make the playoffs. But if, you know, sometimes that's wishful thinking. If you don't have the talent, you're not gonna make it. And I think this year they have the talent, but oh, like I, you I said, disagree. Yeah. those guys will have to will have to deliver. Yeah. yeah. Are you talking about the Mavericks or the Pelicans? Yeah. Oh, oh no, oh, I'm not okay. talking about the Pelicans. Yeah. Yeah. No, the Mavericks, I think, have at least the two guys. Yeah. Um, but I, I think, you know, I think some of these things are are reasonable to expect. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's unreasonable to expect the uh, the mat or the combo of Luca and Porzingis to average at least fifty points a game. I know that's a high number, but I think they both have the talent and ability. And I think Luca, like I said in a couple podcasts or maybe the last podcast, I think he's going to be around 27, 28 a game. I don't think Porzingis that's a high number. Yeah, but you know he's been at twenty points before the fourth quarter has True. even started. Yeah, he's dominated. Like it looks easy yeah. to him. So I don't know if Porzingis is going to be, some people project him to be over 25 a game. Mm-hmm. I just don't think he's going to play enough minutes. Yeah. I think the points per possession will be really high, but I don't think he's going to play enough minutes in order to average over 25 a game. So I think he'll be over 20 in between that 20 and 24 range. Yeah. So those are the things that I think need to happen if the Mavs want to make the playoffs. Um, let us know what you think should happen. Is it any one of these? Do you think any of these are completely unreasonable or just what do you think? Um, send us a message on Twitter at Dallas Hoops Cast. The second topic season preview question I wanted to look at is uh, players, Mavericks players that we think are the most likely to get traded. Okay, I'll go first. Uh, my first guess is Courtney Lee. And that's simply because he has an expiring contract. It's worth twelve point seven million. About, um, and this isn't like this isn't guessing the trade or who I think they're going to trade for, or what the package will be. If I just had to guess who's going to be mentioned first or possibly traded first, is Courtney Lee. Now, just alone, I don't obviously he's not worth a lot because he you know probably won't even play. Um, but the expiring deal might be worth something to someone. I could see them maybe trying to trade it just for a pick, even like a second round pick. If they could use that to add, maybe there's somebody, some random guy that they like in the draft, they could use that to try to add some depth or a guy that they could develop. Yeah. Um, I mean, he could also be a part of a package too, mm-hmm. but that's just, that's my first guess. Who, who else you got on there? Okay. The second I have is actually is actually a package so you know they don't have a lot of talent so it's not like they're going to flip a one for one kind of thing so a potential package would be tim hardaway jr jalen brunson and seth curry now obviously the dis- this depends on the player available like who they're trading for if you're trading brunson and curry i think that means it's a pretty good player so if a player of a certain caliber came available I think this is a package that could entice some teams. Hardaway Jr., he has a player option next year. It's $19 million, so it's not quite expiring because he's probably going to opt into that. But he does have that. Brunson is on three years, but it's really low, $1.6 million about. And then Seth Curry has a four-year deal, but it's a reasonable amount, 7 to $8 million. So you've put those numbers together, and you could kind of form the contracts that it would equal to get the caliber of player that would be necessary to trade these guys. Okay. Well, so I'll just touch on the first two. Like a like a star-ish player. Okay. So I don't think, well, first of all, I don't think the Mavericks are going to be very active at all. 
this year. Yeah, in, that's in honestly that's my guess too. Um, only because it would have to be a star that uh, a team is just willing to give you yeah. for nothing. Because even Hardaway, Brunson, and Curry, like it's a a nice package, but it's yeah. not. It's it, I'd like well, you couldn't even get Bradley Beal. When for you got to think about the teams that are willing to trade a star, yeah. it's the ones that are underperforming, which means they're going to want to rebuild. Which means Seth wouldn't really work yeah. because he's twenty nine. They probably and want it's a long, picks and yeah, yeah. picks and Jalen will probably be their highest chip trade chip. Yeah, their most valuable trade chip. Um, so I don't think they're going to be very active. I think if they are going to make a trade that Andre Iguodala is a potential trade partner. Yeah. True. Um, I honestly, I don't know what the Grizzlies are doing or what he's I doing. Know, it's so bizarre. My theory they're is just determined to not let him end up on the Lakers. Yeah. Is and, all well, it it's is. possible, but my theory is that he wants to wait until the season gets going so he can see who else is good. Mm-hmm. Let's yeah. say the Mavericks are 12 and 6. I mean just hypothetical. Then yeah. that might be okay, trade me to Dallas. Yeah. If if the Lakers can't, you know, make an option yeah. or something. So I I don't know. That's just a theory. Yeah. I think the Mavericks would jump on that in a heartbeat because honestly Iguodala is miles ahead of Dorian Finney-Smith. Well, he would fit yeah. right into that, that starting role. <laughs> but I don't know if they would trade Brunson for him. Oh no. Yeah. No, 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 no. Brunson would only be a part of a a potential star. Yeah, because not I, that Brunson is worth a star, but he's got the potential to be a really good solid piece. Yeah, a really like, good solid piece. Yeah, I don't think they have the players to no. get a star. That's why no. I said this would be like for a star ish yeah. player, like a rung below kind of thing. But yeah, I don't know who that would even be. No, honestly. I mean with Bradley yeah. Beal signing, he's mm-hmm. off the book. So yeah, I like I don't expect them to make to be very active. But if I had to guess. Who the guys would you know? Who would be up? That's Courtney Lee would be number one yeah. option, and because you can flip him for maybe he's not a star, but just for a better player, yeah, that yeah. will play. And uh, my other pick would be Brunson, only because he's gonna. I think he's gonna be good, and he's I think probably, he's gonna be a hot commodity. He has more value. Yeah, I think yeah. Um, and then Hardaway, even though he has a player option that he's probably gonna opt into. Mm-hmm. When he comes off the books, is the off is the summer that everyone wants a hundred million dollars? They can sign Giannis. So yeah, I mean, then the Mavs might as well just keep him. Yeah, true. You yeah, know, then they'll. Well, have that's that what I'm saying. Money, like, yeah. if if a player became av- available that was worth it, yeah, then they might then you do, would it. do it. But otherwise, yeah. they're probably just yeah. keep him. Okay. Third question: Season preview. How many games until we want Carlisle <laughs> fired? Because we're mad or we're fans and we're irrational. So I set an over under for this, and then I'm going to bet against my over under. But the over under that I set was 39 games. So do you take the over or the under? I take the under. Yeah, really? I take the, less the than under. 39 yeah. games. I, wow. I think the first game we see. A Dorian Finney Smith post up. Exactly. <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth. We're gonna see it. Yeah. It's gonna happen. Yeah. Because he loves to it post might up happen a tomorrow. random guy. Yeah. I bet you the very first play of the game <laughs> is gonna be a Dorian Finney Smith post up. Uh, it's if like he'll have a you know, Finney Smith will have a guy on him that's shorter. And, ooh, and so we got to like, take advantage. We got a size mismatch. Okay. No. No. That's, you yes. never have a mismatch with Dorian. No. And so we, for some reason, we would post up Wes Matthews over Let's and over and over that. again. You're giving me PTSD so, <laughs> flashbacks. So I think that the moment he posts up Dorian... Yeah. I don't care what kind of mismatch. <laughs> I don't care if Isaiah Thomas what is on him. What if they're up by 20? It don't matter. Someone said that he'll probably post him up when they're up by 25. Just to test it. Just because. But the yeah. problem is, what if he makes it? Crap. Oh, well, let's do it again. Do it, it 20 ma- more times. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and do it in crunch time. Yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah, as soon as we see a Dorian post up, boom, fire him immediately. Yeah, I uh, Of course I also think he's one of the best coaches in the league. It's a really weird it relationship is, we have with Rick Carlisle. Because I will defend Carlisle yes. <laughs> to the death that he, he is a good coach. But then it's like sometimes He's so frustrating. Yeah, like he some is. of the decisions like why are we hitting our heads on a br- It's like Jason <laughs> Garrett. 
I know. You know, it's like, wh- why are we doing this? It's like, how many games, like last year when Luca, to start the season, like he was not the number one guy, even though yeah. he was clearly leaps and bounds better yeah. than he was. And it was like, we were like, how many games is it going to take before you see that this yeah. guy is a stud and, and you start running everything through him? And finally they did. But it was, but it took, it was, took a long Luca time. Luca had to earn it. Yeah. And he was not happy about it. Yeah. It took a long time. So... Um, over under 39 games, I'm going to say, I don't know, maybe over. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm like I said, I'm betting against my own over. There's a here, random but... stupid post up coming up yeah. and it's coming soon. And as soon as we see it, we're going to know what it was and we're yeah. going to be like, oh crap, here we're gonna... we go again. Yeah. I They're just... going to trade for Wes Matthews <laughs> just so they can post him up. Yeah, I was listening to uh, They're Not the Starters Anymore, the No Dunks, no, no Dunks podcast, and they were talking about the Bucks and how they got all these quality pieces and Wesley Matthews and, and all this stuff. And I was like, have you guys no. watched Wesley Matthews? Like, no, that is not he, a quality. Wesley Matthews is still living off the reputation he had when he was in Portland. Yeah. And that was like 20 years ago. Yeah. And he is still living off that reputation. That That is the only reason why he's making money. Because if yeah. you really look at the last couple of years. Four years. Dude straight up sucks on defense. Yeah. I know he's our lockdown defender, but he couldn't guard anybody. There was yeah. times they put him on Damian Lillard. Lillard was at the basket <laughs> and Matthews was still at the three-point yeah. line. I was like, why, why is he guarding him? And then yeah. one time he... Well, Lillard chose to, to shoot it up. from like 35 yeah, feet. instead of driving it, which yeah. he should have done. And he missed it. And everybody's like, that's the lockdown yeah. defense. It's like, no, no. No, that was just Lillard <laughs> deciding to shoot Taking it from a 35 bad shot. feet. Yeah. Yeah. I just know, my, my fear is that it's going to be in a game and like either a close game or whatever. And we're going to be running like pick and roll sets with like, DeLon Wright and and uh, Dwight, Ma- or Dwight, pa- <laughs> Dwight Powell. Dwight Powell. And, and you know, and, and Luca is going to be standing in the in corner, the corner. Oh, that and, was... and you know, Porzingis is going to be somewhere on the three point so, line. And like, this is my fear that we're going to see that kind of crap. So that happened last year oh, yeah. against the Knicks at home. We went, we to, went the game. to that game and I'm going to be honest with you. I'm embarrassed. I, yeah. I acted like a child. Everyone else is sitting, sitting down, down and, and I am Martin, on my feet Why screaming. is our best player standing in the corner? Because we were pretty close to the court, so I'm sure everybody heard. Yeah. But we're the Knicks are killing us, and the Knicks suck, okay? Yeah, and yeah. they're killing us. And Luca's just standing in the corner, and we're watching Wes Matthews shoot post and ups. Dennis Smith shoot. post up over. And, and I... I, I was so mad. We're and losing fr- it. Yes, and I was screaming, <laughs> and it was so like when I look back, I'm like, God, what were you doing? It was embarrassing. Well, I think you wanted to just leave me there. Yeah, I was. I was embarrassed. Yeah, was <laughs> but like Carlisle gets these ideas where mm-hmm. it's like a, like a Wesley Matthews post up or a Finney Smith whatever, and he does it like four or five times in a row, and we're like, Bro, it ain't working. Well, and you know what's great? You don't have to do this because you got yeah. better players. It's funny because Matthews would dribble it off his foot. I know. Or, or turn just, it over or take a just bad shot. Stupid. Or, and you're just like, what are, what we, are doing? we doing? Like, like why? What are we doing? I could do better than that in a post up. <laughs> like, freaking. I can throw it out of bounds. Yeah, well, me, yeah. I, I can dribble kick the it. ball off yes. my foot all the time. So, yeah. So, anyways, not to, re- not to harp on but Matthews. But that's the way Carlisle is. He, yeah. When he gets this idea, he's so stubborn that. Yeah. It has to be proven in every possible way yeah. that it's not going to work before he changes his mind. Even if you lose 10 games in a row, he's going to keep doing it until yeah. he's like, okay, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my that's my concern is that I think, like I was saying earlier, that they kind of lack depth. Mm-hmm. And so that's just more opportunities for Carlisle to yeah. give it to some other guy besides Luca and Porzingis. Thankfully, we haven't seen any of that in preseason. We've seen actually yeah. what every fan's wet dream is. Yeah. And that's a lot of Luca and Porzingis yeah. over and over and over again. An like, occasional somebody else shooting it. Yeah, but... I mean, I you got to spread it around. Like one, mm-hmm. just like to keep the, the defense honest, but also, you know, to keep them fresh. You can't run them into the ground. So... I'm fine with, you know, like uh, Curry is a great playmaker. And DeLon Wright showed some in the last couple preseason games. Like, I'm okay with that. It's just he has a tendency to kind of just 
ride it and bang until, his head yeah. against the wall until someone's like, dude, you're bleeding, you know? And it just, that's what I'm afraid of. So I'm kind of thinking like with Luca and Porzingis, he won't do that. That's why I put, I took the over on 39 games, but we'll see. Okay. So are we done with that subject? Yes. Okay. I know you're not a big fan of season preview, so I'm not going to do a full season preview. Okay. I'm just going to go through the first five games, and I want you to give me your prediction. Okay. First game, obviously, tomorrow or tonight, whenever you're listening. The Wiz- Wizards. Wizards. Um, ooh. Well, let me go through all five, tough. and then you can. Oh, okay. I was just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's tough. Yeah. <laughs> then uh, Pelicans Friday. Pelicans. In New Orleans. More like Pelicans. <laughs> What? Okay. okay. Trailblazers on Sunday in More Dallas. More like the fail okay. blazers. <laughs> okay, continue. Thank you. Nuggets on the road and then Lakers at home. So you More got... like fakers. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> Disregard. Okay, what'd you say? Wow. Wizards, Wizards Pelicans. at home, Pelicans on the road, Blazers at home, Nuggets on the road, Lakers at home. Okay. Um, I think... Pelicans and Wizards is a win, so that's two. Nuggets at home or in Denver? In Denver. Oh, I'm going to call that a loss. Uh, Blazers at home? Yes. And then Lakers at home? Yes. Uh, I'm not confident in this, but we'll just say split it. So that's three, three, three and, and two. two. Yeah. So you're... But I, I mean, I, I would two and three also, I'd... I think the first game tomorrow is a win. I think the Wizards are going to be the worst team. And in the I hope league. they, I hope they blow them out just to get yeah. a uh, yes. good start to the season. The finally. Pelicans game scares me a little bit just because it's their home opener. Yeah, true. Um, but I think that's a win. I think the Blazers are a win. For some reason, we've had their number at home. True. We've just beat them at that home, is true. and and they don't have an answer for Luca. And their only guy that they could that could guard a wing was Alpha Ruka. And he's on the magic and he's gone. Now, yeah. So. So I think that's a win. A loss in Denver. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just hard. And then the Lakers is a toss-up for me. Like, it depends on how the Lakers come out. Well, that's why I split it between Mm -hmm. the Blazers and Lakers, because the one I thought they could win would be the Lakers, but I don't know. I just think that the Mavericks, and even last year at the end of the the year, they're just really tough at home. I think this year, the home court, and and Mavs fans are are so so excited. And I think... Every game they is going to be. They might actually cheer this. Yes, year. <laughs> I know you won't be the only person in a section that's screaming, screaming my- <laughs> defense. Um, so I think they're going to be really tough at home. I think I just I don't know. Even when they play, especially when they play really good teams, Luca at home against high competition, it just he shows. Yes, out. it just gets him going. Yeah, and uh, so I I think three and two is a good number. I would hope that four and one, but that that game in in Denver is yeah. a scheduled loss. You know, you always hear about the Denver, the mm-hmm. the altitude and all this stuff, yeah. and it's not really real to you. But dude, when you go to Denver, like that is real. Yeah, the altitude it kills you. Now a lot of this is, you know. In the beginning of the season, it's not really a good gauge because well, yeah, teams can either come out hot. Out, yeah. And then there's also teams that can come out struggling. Yeah. So it's not really a good indicator. Like Denver could come out two and three to start the season and everybody's flipping out. Yeah. And uh, same with the Lakers. Yeah. Same with the Lakers. And then they go on a 22 game win streak or whatever. So anyways, I just wanted to ask your thoughts on that. Yeah. So uh, the season finally starts tomorrow against the Wizards. Um, Let us know what you think. So we talked about the five things that have to happen for the Mavs to make the playoffs the players most likely to get traded, and uh, how many games until we want Carlisle fired. The over-under is 39, so send us a message on Twitter, at Dallas Hoopscast. Are you taking the over or the under on uh, whenever we get frustrated with Carlisle? Um, but that's it for this show. Our next one will be a post-game show. It'll be here on Dallas Hoops Fancast, Wizards, Mavs. I'm predicting a win and a blowout. They better. I'm predicting I mean, a the blowout. Wizards literally yeah. have the worst team I've ever yeah. seen. Um, but yeah, thanks guys for listening. Remember to leave a, a rating or a review or we, and we'll give you a shout out. Uh, DallasHoopsCast.com to listen to new episodes. I think that's it. Okay, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.